Okay, welcome to your tutorial on solving quadratic equations by the method of completing the square. Now there's lots of ways to solve a quadratic equation. This is just one way and sometimes it's the most convenient way. Um, and you'll kind of probably learn from experience once you've you know, had a lot of experience with, with solving quadratic, quadratic equations of when this method uh, would be good. So it's kind of hard for me to tell you when you would want to use this because it's more of like an intuitive point uh, which just comes from experience. But that being said, I'm going to show you how to use the tool of completing the square to solve a quadratic equation. And uh, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to give you two examples. And the first one is 4x squared minus 2x minus 5 equals 0. And the other one is uh, when I use x squared minus 2x uh, minus 7 equals 0. Now for the purposes of completing the square, the only difference that's going to affect how we do this is, for example, here the coefficient on the squared factor is 4, and here the coefficient on the squared factor is 1. I know it's not there, but it's implied that it's 1. There's 1x one squared. so there will be one step that's different when the coefficient is not 1. And that's why I'm going to start with this one right here so you can see the step. And then when we get to this one, it'll just be a little bit easier because there will be one step we don't have to do. Once I'm done uh, with these examples, I'll go ahead and list the steps on another uh, slide so you can have them as a point of reference and just as a double check. So we'll start over here on the left with this one. Now, the first thing we want to do when we're looking at an equation is or for completing the squares we want to isolate the if you want to call it the c or it's the constant term so in this case it's a negative five so what I'm going to do is move it to the right side of the equation now I'll just do the shorthand over here instead of rewriting it out but I'm going to add five to both sides and what that's going to effectively do is move the negative five over here it's going to become positive so I'm going to rewrite this 4x minus 4x squared minus 2x. I'm going to leave a space here, and I always recommend that you do that whenever you're completing the square. You'll see why later, in just a moment. And then over here, since we added 5 to 0, we have positive 5 on this on the right side. Now, the next important step, and is something that usually people forget, so you're going to have to be very deliberate about this, is again recognizing that this coefficient on the x squared term is not 1 so it's something other than 1 which means we're going to need to divide both sides by whatever this coefficient term is because we want this to be to have a coefficient of 1 so let me just show you what that looks like and then uh, I think it'll make sense in a minute so I'm going to divide both sides by 4 because that would give you a coefficient of 1 on this term divide both sides by 4 and then if I do that on this line I get 4x squared divided by 4 is just x squared or 1x squared minus 2x divided by 4 is 1 half x and now again I'm going to leave this space here and you'll see why in just a moment and then we have over here just 5 fourths now this is the cool part uh, and you just have to pay attention it's not difficult but it's something we need to do kind of on the side so once you've had enough practice with this, you'll be able to kind of just do this part in your head. But for now, I would suggest go ahead and write it out. And I'll use yellow for this. Hopefully this shows up and you can tell the difference. But what we want to look at here is b, or the term on the linear factor, which is the x, x to the first power. So for our b, we have negative 1 half. Now, if you're not sure why I'm saying b, normally in algebra you have the coefficient on this term is called a, the coefficient on the linear term is called b, and the constant term is referred to as c. So it's just a way of referring, if I say a, that's referring to the quadratic coefficient. b is the linear coefficient, and c is the constant term. So in other words, uh, going back here, we want to look at the b coefficient, which is, in this case, negative 1 half. So I'm just going to go over to the side. b equals negative 1 half. Now, um, what you want to do is we want to take half of b and then square it, evaluate that and see what we get. 
So if I plugged in negative one half for b in this little thing here, I'd get negative one half. Uh, as I was saying, I had a slight technical problem there. Uh, we have one half divided by two, and then we square that. Now that may be confusing for you, but if we just go over here a little bit, that's going to look like one half times one half. So when we divide by two, it's the same thing as multiplying by one half. And I square that. That gives me one fourth squared. Now I remember it was negative, so I should put that in here. But since we're squaring it, it doesn't really matter because that negative becomes positive. And then we get positive 1 over 16. So when we took half of b and squared it, we got through this little process here, 1 over 16. So this right here is what goes there. And all we do is just add it. And we add it to both sides. Because anytime we add something to one side, we want to add it to the other side so that the equation remains uh, balanced. Otherwise, we're just arbitrarily adding an amount over here, but then it's not necessarily equal to what it was before. So we always have to add to both sides the same thing. Or subtracting, whatever the operation is. You want to do it to both sides to maintain that balance. Now, if I just rewrite this, I've got x squared minus 1 half x plus 1 over 16 equals 5 over 4 plus 1 over 16. Now I'm going to take that and put it onto another page. So x squared oops, minus 1 half x plus 1 over 16 equals 5 over 4 plus 116. Now this step is pretty easy. This is the pretty much the final step that we want to do. Um, and what we do here is we want to factor this side of the equation. It's actually pretty simple, um, even, even if you don't have a lot of experience with factoring, because and this is why we call it completing the square. And I'll just go ahead and show you what it looks like factored. This is this factored. So in other words, x minus 1 fourth times x minus 1 fourth, or x minus 1 fourth squared. Now if I were to FOIL that back out, right, it would look something like this, and I'll just go ahead and do that for you. We would do the first two times each other. Then we would do the, in, the outside two x times one negative one fourth then the inside two and then we would multiply the last two together giving us a positive because it's negative one fourth times negative one fourth giving us a positive one over sixteen now if we combine these two like terms we'd get x squared minus one fourth minus one fourth is minus one half x plus one over sixteen so you can see this, since I just foiled it, I showed you it's equivalent to that, which is the same as what we have up here. So this is uh, this x minus one fourth squared is the factored form of this. And if you look at it, it's a squared term. It's the same term squared, which is why we call this completing the square. We do that so every time we do this process, it's actually very easy to find what the factors are uh because we've deliberately set it up from the very beginning so that we would get this squared factor. This makes it very nice. So I'll just go ahead and finish it on the right side. Um if we get a common denominator here uh so we can add these together. If we if we multiply this 5 over 4 by 4 over 4, 4 over, divided by 4 is 1. So we're not really changing this number at all. We're just putting it into a different form. So we're multiplying it by 1, but it'll change the denominator. So if I multiply this, I get 20 over 16 plus 1 over 16. It allows us to add these numbers together much easier. And that equals 21 over 16. So if I were to rewrite this entire, uh, this side equals this side. x minus 1 fourth squared equals 21 over 16. 
Now, to solve this is very simple. And why don't I just go ahead and write on another layer? Oops. X minus one fourth squared equals, let me check out what it was, 21 over 16. Now, to solve this, for x, since that's what we're trying to do anyways, is get a solution for what x is in this quadratic. I would just square both sides. So I'll do that in red. Or I'm sorry, I'll take the square root of both sides rather. Alright. That would give us x minus one fourth equals plus or minus, because anytime we take the square root of something, it's a plus or minus. And I could go into that into another video. Um, that's a very basic uh, math skill, though. So that's I'm assuming that you know why we would have plus or minus uh, when we take the square root. Plus or minus the square root of 21 over 16. Now we could obviously reduce this if we wanted to, but for the purpose of the video, it's not really that necessary. So just continue this. If I add the one fourth to both sides. Because again, I'm trying to isolate the x. Then I get x equals one fourth plus or minus square root of 21 over 16. So equivalently, that's like saying x is either equal to one fourth plus root 21 over 16, or x is equal to one fourth minus 21. Over 16. And if you understand quadratics, you know that generally they look something like that. Um, so if there is at least one place where x is equal to 0, then there should be another one, which is why there's two answers here. So this is what we basically solved, was the roots of this equation, where this equation crosses the x-axis. Now I'm not saying that this is the actual graph, but generally that's what the equations of quadratics look like, or like something like that. So they'll generally cross either at one place, like that, two places, or they won't cross at all. Right. But in this one, it makes sense why we have two different answers. Okay, I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please rate it with a thumbs up and subscribe, and leave a comment. Um, I'm running out of time, so I'll make another video that lists the actual steps and um, yeah, just so you have a, another point of reference to look at. Okay, thanks. Bye.